Hi everyone and welcome to day four of Camping 101. Um, tomorrow is our last day in this five day series where we're doing live uh, Facebook videos and also um, we've got a camping workbook that you can download at www.hxoutdoors.com forward slash camping and it goes through, it, the one workbook is good for all five days of the videos and if you miss any of the videos you can find them on the Facebook site or we're going to put everything up on, um, once we're done we're going to put everything up on hxoutdoors.com forward slash camping so that you can continue to refer back to all of the, the pieces. So yesterday we were live at Whole Earth Provisions and we pulled out a bunch of gear and we went through which pieces of gear are essential for your first camping trip and then what are the basic nice to haves on a camping trip that are going to just make your camping trip a little bit better so you can go as basic or as elaborate as you want but uh, there's a few things that you know if you're trying to go pretty basic but you don't want to completely be without anything um, that's what we went through yesterday so check out yesterday's video and today what we want to talk about is if you're thinking about buying your own gear there's lots of stuff that you can go out there and buy and there's cheap stuff and there's expensive stuff and I've definitely learned the hard way about which particular things should you go cheap on and which things should you spend money on um, you know clothing I've gotten to the point now with clothing, I know which brands I can do well with buying the cheap version and which well which brands are worth spending the money, but it took me years and years and years of buying cheap clothing to figure out which of the cheap stuff is actually good. So we want to share that information with you so that you can just buy the good cheap stuff and the good expensive stuff. So let's start with clothing. Um, First, um, from Academy, there's a brand called BCG, and it's amazing. Um, for their warm layer clothing, it's a great base layer. Um, some of the t-shirts, I wouldn't get like the t-shirts in that brand because they tend to smell um, uh, faster than other brands, but the warm layer of BCG is really good. Um, and they're like $20 a piece. Uh, compared to the expensive brand, which is Smartwool, which is amazing, um, Smartwool is going to be about ninety dollars a piece. So ninety dollars for a top, ninety dollars for a pair of pants. The biggest difference between the two brands—they're both going to keep you warm when it's cold outside. Um, but the biggest difference that I have noticed is that in the Smartwool, um, it does a better job of wicking your moisture away from your body so if you're camping in cold weather um, cold being anything from like you know 55 and below um, when you're camping in cold weather when you go to sleep at night what happens what tends to happen is you get you're cold so you put on a lot of clothes and you get in your sleeping bag then you sweat a little bit because you've got all these layers on and then this the, the the cold air at night chills the sweat and then you get cold again. Smart wool is the one thing that I don't go through that cycle at night when I wear smart wool. When I wear the BCG, I will go through that cycle, but I'll be warm for the most part. So if you're not sure what kind of base layers you need or if you're going to be camping in really cold weather, you can start with the BCG brand of warm weather layers, base layers. And then once you know that you're really going to stick to it, um, you can invest in the smart wool. And then the other good thing about smart wool is you can wear it and wear it without washing it. Um, and it's not going to stink real bad. You know, BCG you can wear for a few days and it's not going to stink <laughs> very much. Um, that is a major factor in me buying shirts is like how many times can I wear it before I have to wash it without it stinking. Um, <laughs> Um, there, you know, it says some of them say odor proof and, or odor resistant and wicking resistant, but that's like the number one thing that I'm looking for. 
Okay, so the next thing when it comes to clothing is, and you can see my clothes, I'm getting ready for a three week uh, road trip. I'm leaving tomorrow. So some of my clothes are air drying right now so that I can pack them. So that's what's swaying in the background. But when you think about buying clothes um, and getting things for on the cheap, think about colors and do they really matter? Because a lot of times you can find the same exact shirt in a different color for half the price. Um, so maybe the black fleece is going to be, you know, $40, but you can get a pink one or a blue one for $20. If you don't care too much about the color that you're wearing, you can definitely find better deals on um, more expensive brands, better quality equipment. Uh, what I tend to do is I, I try to, because when I first started out, I was so mi mismatched in colors because I was just buying the cheapest of everything. So what I try to do now is stick to like general color themes if I can. I mean, I'm still going to buy like the red one versus the black one if it's 50% off, right? And then I'll figure out how to make it work or I won't worry about it. But if you're not worried about... Um, the color specifically and you're not worried about it being last season's version of XYZ you can definitely get really good quality gear um, at much cheaper prices so for example at the end of 2017 I picked up some really good tents for 40% off because they were just coming out with 2018 styles and I didn't mind having the old one because it works just as well I mean there, there's no difference from a quality standpoint and so it's a great way to get quality gear at cheaper prices okay so um, now we're gonna go into just a, a few pieces of the essentials that we talked about yesterday and we're gonna talk about you know should you spend money on them or should you you know save money on them um, tense is the first one so a quality tent is going to last you 20 years. If you take care of it, you're going to have that tent for so long. Um, it, obviously, everything depends on how much are you using it and what conditions are you using it in and how, are you, how well are you taking care of your tent. Um, you know, so tents, you know, they can range from $30 to hundreds of dollars um i would stay away from any tents that are less than about fifty dollars or so new just because i mean unless you're you're okay with using it one time and if it breaks it breaks i mean i did buy one that was like 25 dollars, and the second time i used it one of the poles broke and that's extremely important right like so, you know, if you go above $50, you know, around the $100 mark, I would say, you can get a really good cheap tent. Like, don't go, again, don't go too cheap unless you're okay with, you know, replacing it very quickly. But then, if you're new to camping, you know, the tent is one of those things where if you're new to camping and something happens with your tent, do you know what to do, right? So if you get a cheap tent because you're like, I'm not sure if I want to go camping, um, so I don't want to spend a lot of money, but then a pole breaks or it starts leaking or, I mean, those are the two main things that would go wrong. Um, what are you going to do? So as long as you know what to do in that scenario, it's okay to go cheaper because then you can compensate for it. But if you're, if you're nervous about camping for your first time, I would say either rent a tent or get a tent that's around at least the hundred dollar mark. I mean, it could be on sale, of course, but like if it's original price is around the hundred dollar mark, then that's that's telling you that it's going to be a little bit better. Um, you know, the first tent I bought, I bought used. I it was a no name brand tent. I bought used. Um, I used it for fifteen years, but luckily I did not camp in any rain. So the first time it rained on me, I got wet. It just, the whole thing leaked. And I mean, maybe it wouldn't have leaked 15 years earlier, but by the time it rained on me, it, you know, I was getting wet. So 
You can also buy, if you are going to do a cheaper tent, you can buy a spray that will waterproof the outside. Now, when you're waterproofing things, sometimes it loses the breathability, so you just want to weigh, which is more important, um, the breathability of the fabric or it truly being waterproof. And you can also buy um, a sealant for your seals. Because, or for your seams rather because that's where most of the water generally will start leaking your seams will start to separate so you can buy a seam sealer and then you can buy a spray to spray the, the rest of the fabric okay so that's tense um, the next is hydration packs so a hydration pack is the book bag that you're gonna wear that has a water bladder in it so that as you're hiking, um, you can there's a hose and you can just drink water and it's reusable so that you're not wasting plastic bottles. Hydration packs you can definitely go cheap on, especially in the beginning. Um, you know, buy something, but when you're gonna buy a hydration pack, make sure you get one that has a waistband on it and not like a flimsy one strap waistband. You want something that has cushion that sits on your hip bones um, because this is gonna help you start getting ready to carry weight on you. So especially if, you think, if you're thinking about backpacking, uh, you're gonna wanna be able to ramp up with backpacking. So you want a book bag or a hydration pack um, that you can put a little bit of weight in, 10, 15, 20, 30 pounds, um, and you want a waist strap to hold that weight on. So you can go cheap. I mean, Camelback is the kind of like the Kleenex of hydration packs. Um, they're really, really good backpacks. I, you know, my, my second hydration pack was a Camelback, and I had it for 15 years and the only reason it started really breaking down was because I started bringing it kayaking and in the ocean and stuff and you know water and especially salt water is really durable um, it really puts an impact on your gear so you want to make sure if you are bringing it in water and especially salt water that you're cleaning it properly so camelbacks the good ones if you invest money in them, they're going to last you a really long time. But if you're still not quite sure what to do, you can get a, a, a hydration pack for, you know, around $30, $40, and it's going to do just as well. Um, but if you get a Camelback that's $100 to $150, it's still going to do well, and the, it's going to be a lot more durable. So if you know you're ready to upgrade, you know, definitely go for a Camelback Level 1. Um, I did Camelback, and then I did a BCG one. I think the new BCG Camel, uh, sorry, hydration packs, um, they don't have the waist strap anymore, so I'm, I'm actually looking for a new one. So if anybody has recommendations on hydration packs that they like, please put them in the comments section because I'm, I'm searching for a new one for myself. And I'll let you guys know what I decide on once I get it. Sleeping bags, I think, are definitely worth the money. So... A tent, you can always rent a tent and you can rent various ones so that you can get a feel for what size tent do you want, what features do you want in a tent. Um, if you don't know if you're going to go multiple times, it's better to spend $25, $45 to rent a tent than to buy one for $25 to $45 as we, as we just discussed. So you can always rent a tent, but for a sleeping bag, you can rent sleeping bags too, but that's going to be personal preference on whether or not you know you want to sleep in something that's that other people have been in um for me you know you can always use a sleeping bag so you can get really cheap ones that are quality at academy it's the magellan brand sleeping bag they're 30 degree bags they're very roomy um we talked a little bit yesterday about how to pick a sleeping bag so please refer to yesterday's video for that but the BCG bag at Academy I think it's about $50 or so it's a perfect starter bag so if you want something that's gonna last and keep you warm and also has some options it has a foot zipper which is awesome you can't stick your feet out because there's a little netting but actually I would cut that netting part off um, and stick my feet out. Now, if you're gonna be camping 
um, sleeping outside of your tent, you might want to keep that netting on just so bugs don't go in. But outside of that, it's a great starter bag. Um, my bag, I think I spent about $200 for my bag and I bought it 18 years ago and it's still my favorite bag ever. I actually got it in Australia. Um, I've tried to look to see if I can find it online, but um, I haven't quite found exactly it yet. But my bag is a 24 degree bag. And when you're looking at bag ratings, uh, degree ratings. The degrees that the bag is rated is not necessarily the degree that you're going to be comfortable in. So if the sleeping bag says it's a 30 degree bag, that doesn't mean you're going to be warm and toasty and 30, degree, 30 degrees outside. That's more of a survival rate. So it's like, yes, you'll survive in it at 30 degrees, but you're going to need other layers you're going to need to wear other layers in a 30 degree bag if it's 30 degrees outside. So my 24 degree bag, I with with my smart wool base layers and like hat, I will be warm in about 30 degrees. Um, but I'm wearing smart wool socks. I'm wearing down booties. I'm wearing smart wool base layers. I'm wearing um, some kind of head cap. And then I've got my mummy bag cinched up. If 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 I'm not dressed in all of all of those layers, then I think my 24 degree bag is good for about 40 to 45 degrees in just like light layers. And then in 60 degrees, what I do with a 24 degree bag, because obviously it's going to be a lot hotter. Um, a lot of times I just leave it unzipped and use it more like a blanket, um, so that you don't have to buy two right because the warmer bag is always going to keep you warm but a cooler bag is not always going to keep you warm right so if you buy let's say a 50 degree bag that means you have to weigh way more you have to wear way more layers at night if it's going to be less than 50 degrees um, if you have any questions about that i went through that kind of quick go ahead and email me at amy hope at hgxoutdoors.com, put them in the comments section, or uh, make sure you're downloading the workbook so that you can read what we wrote uh, about each of these things. Okay, we already talked about base layers. I'm looking at the workbook. Um, we already talked about base layers, so um, I'm gonna skip that. Rain jackets. Rain jackets are one of the things that I've spent a lot of money over the years buying various rain jackets and none of them working. So what I have now, I would say go um, go quality, but look for deals because you don't need a rain jacket every day. So anytime you're you know perusing at any of the outdoor REI or whatever, keep an eye on the rain jackets. Go try them on, see what you like. And then keep an eye on them and wait for them to go on sale um, because they will go on sale and then um, so buy quality but but look for deals on them the rain jackets that I have I have the REI um, trench coat one it's probably called something else but you'll know it when you see it they only I think they only have one trench coat at REI um, it's it's really good it has kept me dry um, it's long um, and it's windproof. That's really important because um, I feel like a lot of times when it's raining, it's also windy. So I like that particular rain jacket for when it's a little bit colder outside or if it's windy. And I'll actually use that even if it's not raining. I will still use that jacket as my windproof base layer if it's cold outside or cold and windy because I'll just put fleeces and smart wool underneath it and then I'm warm because I've got my rain jacket that also doubles as a wind jacket. And then I have a light layer, I think it's a Marmont light layer rain jacket that has armpit zips. Armpit zips are my favorite thing ever because if it is windy, and, or it's raining and you need to have your jacket on but you're hot at the same time, you can unzip your pits and you get great ventilation without getting wet. It's Armpit zips are like almost a necessity for, for my gear. Um, okay, headlamps. 
if you're doing basic outdoor activities, you can go cheap on a headlamp. Um, it's just a light source that you need. So go cheap, get a light source, get a flashlight. Headlamps are nice because you can use both of your hands if you have a headlamp. Um, if you're going to be doing stuff like more hardcore activities like trail running at night or caving, you're going to want to spend the extra money to get a really bright light. Um, but outside of any extreme activities, you just need a light source. And you can get cheap ones that are bright. You can get cheap ones that are really good. So, you know, don't don't invest in, in like this awesome headlamp off the bat. Just start with something cheap until you know exactly what you want and then you can go from there. Socks are extremely, extremely important. Definitely invest in socks. and. It's a hard transition because I only wear Smartwool socks now, and they're the minimum price for a Smartwool sock is fifteen dollars, I think, and they go up to about twenty-five or so dollars. But all of the socks that I have are Smartwool socks or an equivalent um, wool sock, but the majority are Smartwool, and everything is a wool sock. Is definitely worth worth the money. Your feet stay drier, they stay cooler, they stay warmer, all at the same time. So, I wear the thin running sock, the thin running Smartwool sock, in my hiking boots. But I'm not a big, I I don't like um, things on my feet, so I typically don't wear the thicker ones. A lot of people, I mean, they make a medium weight one and then when it's cold at night for camping when it's cold I wear the really heavy ski socks smart wool socks like the ski ones that are medium or heavy brand they go for all the way up to my knees and they're amazing I love those and then I couple that with the REI down booty and my feet are nice and warm and dry and it's amazing um, if you can keep your feet and your head warm um, and your chest warm, you're going to be warm on a camping trip. So I do, I take care of my feet. I have um, fleece vests and then something to protect my ears and my, my head. And then I'm, those are my primary things to keep me warm. So those are just a few things um, that about how to save money when you're looking to start your outdoor gear. We started with the essentials. If there's a particular piece of outdoor equipment that you're thinking about buying, please message me in the comments section below and let me know what it is and I can give you my opinion on if you if there's a cheap version that's that's good to spend your money on or if it's worth it to spend a little bit more and get the quality brand. So just let me know and tomorrow we're going to be talking about where to camp which is perfect timing because I'm headed on my road trip to Yellowstone tomorrow so I'm going to have plenty of places that I'm stopping along the way and we're also going to talk about I'm also going to post about where I'm going on my road trip um, all of next week all for the next three weeks actually so stay tuned for updates about the road trip as well and I'll see you guys tomorrow bye